Hello, how's everyone doing? Today, we got a little uh, YDBT Daily, uh, your daily dose of bullshit and uh, things that happen during the day in the coyote world. Oh, I have, that's interesting. I never even bothered to look how I look without the light on, but I think it looks pretty good. It's uh, it's dark, but when you have this light on, I never, I, I forgot. I think I like it without the light on. Yeah, let's do that without the light. Fuck, that's good shit right there. It's good lighting. So how you guys doing? Little uh, YDBT Daily for you guys. Um. Today we're talking about what is the most satisfying thing about remote tuning. Now, a lot of you guys probably think it's, uh, you know, the end of the day <laughs> because, you know, you hear me complain a lot. But again, I'm only doing this to try to educate you guys so that you avoid certain mistakes. And some tuners like looking at that. I don't consider myself a tuner. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I'm a file sharer. You know, I think John Jr. is the head tuner and I just share his files and then I adjust and tune from there. So I'm not fancying myself some badass because I'm really not. I'm just a regular fucking schmo that got lucky, got a gig like this, and I happen to communicate pretty well. And that shows that, you know, you can pretty much, as long as you communicate well and have decent um, customer service skills, you can get a job pretty much doing anything. So some of the most satisfying things in tuning um, is usually helping a customer accomplish their goal. And in the last... Two weeks, we, we have had a lot of customers accomplish a lot of goals. And I wanna talk a little bit about a couple of them just to you know reiterate some of the points that we we make during the live streams or that I make during the live streams that we talk about on, on the Lund Racing page and stuff like that. Because when you listen to us, typically you do pretty well, right? Uh, as long as you, we have seen the data, we have seen a huge sampling size as to what people go through and we try to prevent you from repeating history. And if you ignore that, then, you know, that's when we start to chirp a little bit. But before we get way into it, uh, we'll talk uh, with the people here, uh, say hi, and then we'll get into my slight monologue. And then we'll just talk some shit with the people about what the hell's going on. Uh, Nick Rogers, Denzel, Mike Rasovic, Eliza, uh, David Parks, Bill Morrison. And JD Swag were the first ones to get on. The Baltic Bro says the most satisfying thing about after the tuning is done, your tuner becomes your best friend. No fucking way. I love you. I don't want any friends. I love you. We, I am providing a service, and after that, I live my life, and that's how I want to do it. Hit that like button. Everyone says Mike Schmidt. The federal government passed a bill now demanding manufacturers build kill switches for 2026. Were well, you fucking surprised? Dustin Angler, Love Boost, Mini Bike Mad Man. Uh, don't worry, Mini Bike. I'll play some more uh, Wesley Evans for you. Coca Cola with the Gen 3 Roush Car, Coyote Flur Flurry, Coyote McFlurry, Coyote Fury. Gordon Kemmerling, Orlando Chavez, uh, the, 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 the Macho Matt, Cuban Coyote in the house, um, Boosted 1080, Joey G, Alan SF50, Jared Wells, uh, <laughs> the Noodler, uh, GT Frank, Thomas Akumbe, and Raped Ape GT, Alexi B, Frank, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we're done. So, we all know this sound clip. Like, we, we all know this sound clip. What the fuck? What's up, nigga? Hey. You want to squabble? Hey. That sound clip came from a video from, from um, not Desert 1320, Valley Racing Channel. Shout out to Valley Racing Channel. And that was when Cuban Coyote, a guy I first heard of, Cuban Coyote, when I started tuning him, he had a manual Gen 2 car, cams, 200 shot. I'm like, you're going to blow it up. <laughs> He's like, nah, son, I got to race in these streets, you know, whatever. So he was out there going to race a Jeep with a Paxson deal, but his trans had issues, whatever happened. And then they started beefing. Uh, June went out there and gave me one of the best lines that I played for probably a whole year. What the fuck? What's up, nigga? Hey. You want to squabble? Hey. Shout out to June. So ever since then, Cuban has wanted to just have a, uh, you know, be in the game, be, in the, be relevant, be in the racing game. And he wanted to just have the most consistent race car he can afford to, to make and, and race and have fun. He's like, what should I do? And I said, I'm going to be honest with you, man. You want trouble-free in terms of transmission and A to B passes? Get yourself a Turbo 400 Trans. Now, that is a very expensive proposition, upwards of eight to ten to $12,000, maybe more depending on converter, which, which trans you're going to get, whatever, drive shaft, cross member, the whole nine yards. But he actually said, you know what? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, whatever my tuner uh, suggests, I'm going to go with. So he took a leap of faith. And he said, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to roll with what Alex has going on because he's obviously does, does this for a living and I'm going to, I'm going to follow what he says. So sure enough, he goes out there, spends the money, gets a turbo kit from David Van Voris, um, 
gets his motor after the nitrous motor build blows up he puts a paxton on it gets the paxton out of it puts a turbo on it now he has a turbo uh stock bottom end car with cams and he's got a turbo 400 trans in the thing and he was out there just racing just gets in the car starts it goes through about six batteries because the cold start is an issue over there and i don't want to flood that car cylinders with a bunch of fuel so i'm not going to give it too much crank fuel so he is racing and you know win some lose some but he's in the game you know but whereas before he was kind of outside looking in now he's in the game he is in it so he goes out to the track the other day and has a great outing uh has a great outing races some people first time ever at a track and watching him from afar I was literally a proud papa, uh, not because he's, you know, my pupil, because he trusted in what I thought he should do. He did it, and he went out there and had a whole bunch of fun for a whole day, a whole freaking day, and enjoyed himself. And the car was able to drive back on the trailer. Headphone users, headphone users, watch out. So this is him at the track, first time ever, having some fun. fucking day I don't know. I, he, he must have made i don't know uh five passes four passes or something like that had a little grudge race thing with a guy did well and the car the only issue was his uh his uh, breathers were leaking because you have to have catch cans on cars like that especially when you're over 15 something pounds of boost you gotta have catch cans so he's gonna get catch cans but the car drove back on the trailer and he was a happy cat car drove home is in one piece after a full day of racing can't ask for better than that he's been racing on the street racing here racing there so I was sitting back and I was, I had this overwhelming feeling of like satisfaction for him because I'm like a giver by nature. Right? I, I, I don't, my shit just sits and this dude is out there getting it done. And I kind of can see his uh, enthusiasm and the joy he's getting out of it. And I actually sat back and went, man, I'm fucking, I'm happy for him. I did not ever think oh, I did that. No, because a lot of tuners and companies tend to want to, Take credit for someone else's accomplishments. Like if someone gives you a cold air and then you run a number, the cold air company has the balls to say that it was because they're cold air. Like, dude, this guy's so talented. He could make a trash can tune well and it's he'll be fine. So I love how people try to glom onto them shit. But I'm really happy for Cuban Coyote that he actually got some stuff done, got uh, his car running well, and he's enjoying himself. That's the whole point of this whole thing. So enjoy yourself. Then we got my dude, a guy that I've known from VMP from a long time, to Auto Solution, Rami Saidan, who started working in his side garage next to his house, and not even a nice garage, literally a one bay concrete floor thing, and he grew that business in three to four years to be the biggest powerhouse <laughs> in in Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico. I know some people don't like it when Puerto Ricans say Puer Puerto Rico, I go Puerto Rico. He goes out there and he has been, he, he, he builds the fastest Mustangs, uh, in Puerto Rico. We tune them for him, but he also builds the quickest and fastest, uh, ZR1 and Chevy cars in Puerto Rico. We don't have nothing to do with that. It's his talent. It's his talent. So tuners cannot take credit for anything because I bet you Rami can build something, see what's going on with the data and talk to any tuner that is worth half of whatever half is worth uh, his weight in gold <laughs> or, or not worth shit. And he'll say, hey, man, this isn't right. And he'll work with someone until he gets it right. So he goes out to a half mile event and he goes out there and just takes some, you know, some hardware. And I'm like, good for him. And he's having a whole bunch of fun, has a crew behind him. They wear matching shirts. <laughs> like, I've never had this much fun at any track in my life. Like, in my life. I've never had this much fun ever. <laughs> Like, I'm like, these guys look like they're having the fucking time of their life. And you know what? After seeing that, I said, it gave me a overwhelming sense of satisfaction for them. I never thought, well, look, if it wasn't because of me, I wasn't. No, I was like, dude, I am so happy that someone like a Cuban Coyote is out there enjoying his vehicle. And someone like a Rami Zaidan took um, to learning how to work on modern cars on his own vehicle, spent his own money, and then grew that into a thriving really successful business and that's the most satisfying part about tuning for me not that i tune the fastest car or i don't know that other people are enjoying themselves with their cars i'm not enjoying myself i fucking hate all of my cars i hate it i just want one badass car and i want to just burn all my shit but that's what happens when you're in the industry you have to worry about other people's shit first 
and your shit always comes second, third, fourth, fifth. So that's the satisfaction that you can get in this industry. If you're in this industry, guys, and you think your car is going to go fast, uh, think fucking twice. Your customers' cars are going to go fast before your shit. Ask anyone that works in this industry and builds cars in this industry. If you think you're going to get into this industry and your cars are going to go fast, uh, uh-uh. your customers' cars are going to go fast first because that's what brings you money. So, yeah, that's, in my opinion, the most satisfying thing about tuning remotely is kind of living through the customer's experience and uh, appreciating the fact that they trust us, use us, and accomplish their goals. And I, I couldn't ask for, for a better couple of weeks of just seeing people enjoy themselves. Now, today, I also wanted to mention before I get into it, a gentleman who is an NA guy, super hardcore NA guy. He was all about NA, 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 cams, Cobra Jet, all this shit. And he goes, God damn it, Alex. It's not breaking into the sevens. I don't know what to do. I'm like, dude, you're, you have the same tune everyone else has. NA, NA, NA Gen 3 car, CJ, cams. I was like, dude, you have the exact same tune everyone else has. He's like, ah, fuck this NA bullshit. I'm just going to shove a Whipple on it. Okay. Shoves a Whipple on it. <laughs> Things a freaking rocket. Things a freaking rocket. Okay. And then... Uh, he's like, I don't know why anyone would stick with NA after, after feeling this. I go, exactly. Forget sevens and fucking sixes. We're right into the fives. We're right into big boy numbers really quickly. And he's like, why the hell did I like, I bet you he was thinking, why the hell did I waste my time putting cams on this thing, buying a CJ 15 freaking cold air intakes boost. And he was done. This is why we have seen in one year, guys, you can see many people's lives through many different customers, right? You'll say, well, this guy started NA, ended up doing this, spent $20,000. Then he went boost and he was happy for two years. So I tell people, hey, uh, I've seen people do this before. I've seen people make this mistake of like trying different cold airs, doing this, doing that shit that doesn't matter. If the end result is just to go fast, these guys, uh, you know, the, I have a histogram of, of personalities they went right to boost and they were happy for years where you're frustrated every weekend trying to eke out the 0. 0.0001 on your on your time slip or draggy when this guy's just having fun going two seconds faster than you on pump gas full weight. And this gentleman made me kind of realize that yeah, all this all this other bullshit doesn't really matter. All this other bullshit doesn't really matter in terms of um, chasing little things unless you're class racing. I don't understand why you would like stick with the NA game. And every single guy that goes to boost after sticking with the NA game for a while enjoys the ever living shit out of it. They're like, oh my God, this feeling will never come from an NA car. I go, exactly. After you guys take your hoods off, 15 cold air intake, this and this and that, bro, you're not going to enjoy yourself as much as if you had boost on the car. So that's the most satisfying thing. Give you a little story about an NA guy who was max effort NA, put boost in. He goes, fuck NA shit. I'm like, exactly, exactly, exactly. Eliza says, I see Matt 760. He's not London anymore. Yeah, no hard feelings there. He just thinks he can um, work better with uh, Trevor and <laughs> go ahead, buddy. Good luck on those 15 uh, CAI revisions. Have at it. You know, just don't. I uh, hope he starts with a brand new tune. Doesn't doesn't piggyback off of Lund's data. That's all. That's all. I don't care. I don't care. If you're if you're out there starting from scratch with your own shit, cool. Have at it, brother. I don't care. Please have fun. And when he wants to go turbo or supercharger, he knows where to come. Because no one, no one, no one, no one beats us in anything. But he felt he had a better relationship with that guy. I said, hey, you have my blessing. <laughs> Peace. See you later. You have my blessing. Go do your thing. Um, if you ever decide to go turbo supercharger or get, you know, to some man shit, we'll be here waiting for you. And that's how it works. I'm not mad that they go somewhere else. That's their right. I encourage it. If you're going to, and again, I'm not talking about Matt 760. He's been nothing but great. I like him. But if you're another guy and you think you're going to threaten me by leaving, you're going to find that I'm going to you, I'm going to encourage you to try everyone else. I'm going to encourage you to go everywhere and then because then you'll see how the others do it. Then you'll see how the others tune. Then you see how the others do things. And I guarantee they all come back. They all come back. They all come back. So I want everyone to try everybody. Uh, and then when your car blows up for the third time and you call and you call motherfuckers and be like, yo, what can I do? I'm like, sorry, bro. You, you rolled that horse. <laughs> you chose that horse. You ride out with that horse. <laughs>
<laughs> the NA Swiss cheese cars. Exactly. Just want to say hi. I'll catch the replay. Um, Cuban Coyote says, thanks for all the advice. I'm going to teach myself how to read logs so I won't be bugging you so much. That's the next best thing you could do, Cuban. Edwin Martinez is at that level. Edwin Martinez, to me, is the first graduate of Lund Racing University. While others think that they know how to interpret the data, Edwin Martinez and Oscar Morin, that team, Shrek, the Shrek Army, those guys know exactly what to do about what. The tune is done. So all they have to do is boost management, ramping, ramping it in, vehicle weight, two-step. They have the power at their fingertips, and they don't have to bug us for absolutely anything. They've graduated in terms of reading logs. Tinkering on a new car is nothing like tinkering on an old pushrod motor. How many car lengths would you guys estimate? One second on 60 to 130. Wow. Four? Maybe five? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a gap. It's a, it's a sizable gap. Um, Mike Rasovic says, could have named this video the same as last night's TDC. When the customer listens to their tuner, it can be a great experience. And Jimmy Jams gave me 10 bucks. Thank you very much, Sharpie. I haven't seen you in a while. Probably just banging that hot chick he's with. Good for you. Good for you. Glad I found this show before I wasted my money. Look, the, if you want, if you have any, if, okay. If you want to take some advice from me and you want to go fast eventually and you think going max effort and a first then boost is a viable option, I would say no. Save, 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 save for boost. The NA chase becomes so stupid. Guys, people are putting nitro fucking fuel in their cars and claiming NA. And I'm like, what? You're putting an exotic nitro infused fuel in your car that melts spark plugs and you're required to have a return style fuel system and ID 1300s or FIC 1440s to run NA, right? The, and then these guys don't have enough money to like rebuild their motor when it blows up, but they're out there putting return style fuel systems, taking hoods off, gutting it, going, you know, nines and tens. When you could do that shit on pump gas and boosting full weight and a Whipple or an Edelbrock or a Paxton. There was a gentleman on Instagram. He goes, listen to your tuner, dude. This guy was 100% on the money. When 10 O's at 136 or 138 in a fully loaded Gen 3, 10 or 80 car. And I'm like, yeah, right. On pump gas, I think. Maybe if, it, if it is the 85, it's super low boost. I'm like, there you go. Why would you even try to chase the NA game where you're going to be into it for five to $7,000 after it's all said and done? You're going to hate how it drives. You're going to hate how it sounds because it has dumps. You're going to hate your life. Just save for boost. And that's the biggest thing I need you guys to take away from the show. That I'm not doing this because I'm lazy and I don't want to chase the NA game. I'm trying to save you fucking money. You pay us to do shit, I'll do shit. But if you think the magic is in the tuning each time, you got it way fucking twisted. The, the biggest expenditure that NA guys have is tuning. So let's say you go to blah, blah, blah tuner and you are not satisfied with blah, blah, blah tuner. Then you go to another tuner that pops off on, uh, on Facebook, Instagram, and Mustang 6G. And you're not satisfied with their customer service. So then you think, well, I'm going to go to a local dyno tuner because dynos are better. Dynos are better, you know. Okay, dyno tunes are way better than email tunes. Sick. Guy can't even get the fucking car to shift. Then you try Lund. And you're like, okay, you know, it runs good. I like the customer service. But, you know, for whatever reason, you think there should be. I I feel the car should be faster. Okay. Dude, the, dude, the tune's done. The car is either a dud or that's as fast as it's going to go. There's no magic. And then we start saying stuff like, you might want to just boost the motherfucker because you're chasing a time that just isn't possible with your car. So now you have four tunes, probably a thousand bucks by the time it's all said and done with upgrades and E85 and revisions, da 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 da. You play got $4,000 in tuning. And each tune runs within two tenths of each other. <laughs> like, who's the idiot there? Who's the idiot there? The tuning can make the, look, if the data makes sense, I cannot magically go, here's 50 more horse that I was holding back on. I, you know, I was holding back 50 horsepower. Here it is. N no, we give you everything. Here it is. If it doesn't react, get boost on that motherfucker. I feel as though people are lured into making any power because the introductory price is lower. Boost is more expensive initially, but cheaper in the long run. Exactly. Boost for the wind, turbo or blower, whatever floats your boat. It's the way to go. Blower. 
Under 1,000 horse, blower. It's not even close. Under 1,000 horse, blower is less maintenance. You get more bang for your buck and generally performs pretty goddamn well. If you want race car shit, turbo. Ken McAllister says, people always have the money to do it right the second time. If you plan to go to Florida and we'll do FI, okay, forced induction. Okay, Madi 50 nobody ever says forced induction. <laughs> like that that term is like long gone. And we'll do NA for some time now. Then invest in systems pension work as you will not loss it when you go big. Wow. <laughs> that comment did not disappoint for shit. Uh, Javier Bueno uh, retracted a statement. Thank you. He says, for the other channel, it's hilarious. He gave me $5 twice. I love it. So can I now get the Mad 760 Classic Sauce Tune? I that is literally the base file in our system. Oh, CJ Gen 3, here you go. Oh, cool, love it. Can I get the Mat 760 tuned? I'm like, you got it. But hey, you know what? Let me just hit the math by one percent and send it again. Oh, much better. <laughs> okay, buddy, got it. Placebo, motherfucker. Um, we got 152 likes and 270 viewers. Come on, guys. Come on. Yeah, look, I'll start going three a days. And then you're going to be like, oh, man, I miss those daily shows Alex used to do. Then get the likes up real easy. Um, I just wanted to go low to mid 11s NA before I go boost. That was easily done. Now century time. Alex, why is everybody so scared of their stock oil pump gears on crank sprockets? Because the same reason people think that going from a JLT120 to a Steeda is going to gain them power. The same reason people think if they go from a stock airbox to a P51 is going to be like 50 more horse because of marketing. Oil pump gears don't ever have to be replaced in a car unless you're planning on leaving it on the limiter, like leaving it on the fucking limiter. Oh, let me uh, pick the car up from the dealership. Oh, you might want to replace your fucking car. Crank sprocketing and uh, oil pump gears. Oh, what about if I go boosted? Does Roush put does Roush put OPGs on their shit? No, no. When you pick up your car from uh, one of those uh, aftermarket, um, you know the people that sell Roush blowers or people that install Whipple superchargers at a dealer and offer it with a warranty, do they put in crank sprockets and oil pump gears? No, the fucking timing chain cover uh, the the. Chain cover does not come off. They go, here you go. But the marketing has scared people. And then when you see how those idiots drive that have oil pump gear failures on NA cars, I'm like, yeah, I'm surprised the rod didn't check. I'm surprised the rod didn't chuck out of that shit. Imagine, imagine early Coyote, people were chucking rods after getting a tune because they were bouncing it off of the rev limiter. You don't think if the marketing was done properly, that manly... Would have said, you need rods in this bitch. You need rods NA. You need rods NA, dude. Dude, if you don't put rods in this bitch NA, it's going to fling out the fucking bitch. That's what happened with crank sprockets and oil pump gears. Exactly what happened. Marketing, the scare tactic. The same reason you think you need three fucking boosters. You're going to have so many fucking jabs on your shit. Uh, Omnicron, Megatron. <laughs> Beelzebub, like every fucking variant is going to come out. Yeah. Oh, you got the, you're going to virtue signal. You're like, not only am I vaxxed and quadruple boosted, but I stuck the Pfizer dildo that periodically shoves shit in my body to, oh, new variant. Oh, the most new variant must have come out. The insert, uh, the dildo insert uh, that, that le keeps me safe. Sir, you can't come into this club. It's okay. I have the Pfizer dildo. Oh, you got the Pfizer dildo? Come on in, asshole. Dumb motherfucker. Just to show I'm not poor like NA people, says Mexico Racing Lee. You going live tonight, brother? Let me know. Love you, man, says Mini Bike Madman. Real teal baby. <laughs> oh, good shit. Um, Factory Cobra and GT500 have powdered OPGs and making mad power. No, JMS, don't tell them that. J JMS, how how dare you, JMS? You, <laughs> you liar. You accuser. You got to have oil pump gears on a uh, aftermarket forged oil pump gears on a car. If not, it'll just fucking explode and lose oil pressure. Bro, the marketing is ridiculous and people fall for it. Fall for it. Like, I... I have thought about this, guys, and I've thought about this a lot. 
I thought about making troll accounts and make up parts just to see how many stupid motherfuckers would ask about it. Like the pedal extender. The pedal extender is the best invention on the planet. Instead of plugging in a device between your throttle body and your wiring harness, just tape something to your foot. And now the pedal ramp is way more touchy. Oh, the throttle's way touchier. Why? Because you taped on a pedal extender to or your foot extender to your foot. Uh, <laughs> it was not marketing. It was the biggest YouTubers being told they need OPG. It's called marketing. What what part of <laughs> It wasn't marketing. It was YouTubers marketing it to people. Jesus Christ. I've been I've been six years with a 2015 P1X, 11 PSI, never opened the engine, just JB welded the cranks now. <laughs> it done. OPG, no OPGs needed. I took them to uh, someone else and, and got them heat treated. But Alex, I have a special file that I flew you in to tune my car in person. Yo, there's no fucking way Cuban. There's no fucking way Cuban got... You, can you imagine the Cali motherfuckers seeing Cuban roll up, get on the chip, run a number, driving back on the trailer like, yo, man, yo, I swear to God, I saw YOLO in fucking uh, uh, Orange County somewhere. I don't know where, yo, oh, fucking shit about a sack. I, I saw YOLO at SAC. He was at Sacramento Airport, bro. And he flew in to tune Cuban shit in person because there's no way an email tune will survive that. Yo, let's draw that shit out, son. Yo, you think you can get Cuban over to the meat and I could plug in my shit to draw it out, son? Draws it out with HP tuners. Oh, I can't index it? All right, hey, HP tuners, can you draw this file out? Like, no, fuck you. <laughs> oh, that's happened. Um, SNB, Alex, if I wanted to slap a Whipple on my Gen 2 MT82 car, is there any other part that I should upgrade besides the factory clutch? I would do some... Uh, Exhaust modifications to make the air get out as uh, efficiently. Do you know what I'm saying? Remember the moon shoes? The moon <laughs> shoes. The moon shoes. <laughs> Remember on Seinfeld, they had those calf calf sneakers that had a big wedge in the front to constantly work out your calves while you're running on Seinfeld? Oh, that was good shit. Good marketing is when people don't know they're being marketed. Exactly. Exactly. Bumping in, Alex. <laughs> Flew in YDBT private jet. Could you imagine asking me to fly you in to tune a combo we tune every fucking day? Oh, Turbo 400, uh, uh, Turbo 400, Turbo Coyote car. Here you go. Boop, boop. Bye bye. See you later. Like, there was a guy that I never received logs from, like, ever. I'm like, oh, here you go, sir. And he's like, all right, cool. And then he's like on the LUN forum, like, hey, man, I want to thank Alex. My car ran 870s. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, thank Junior. I'll. Here you go. It was a 4R200 Whipple car, I think. And I was like, here you go. Give me logs. Never got a log. Hell, I never even got a log from the track. He just went. <laughs> went 870s. I'm like, hey, congrats, bro. I'm like, what do I mean to do? Alex on the putty jet. I need the OPG grenade uh, something tune, please. Marketing is everywhere. Your dang phone listens to you and puts ads in your feed. Start saying piano. Start saying piano to your phone. Piano shit shows up, bro. When installing over oh, here, we got we got JD Swag gave me two bucks. And Matt 2011T says you definitely need oil pump gears when you're tri charger with seven and a half inch pistons and an intaker. Man, shit, I gotta lower the combustion, man, because like right now the combustion is like 10 to like no, like 11 to no, nah, but like I gotta lower the combustion to like seven to one. Because man, fucking tires, man, spinning on the rollers, man. It's fucking bullshit, man. Seven and a half inch. Ah, man. I'm gonna tri charge a NOS, supercharger, and turbo. Wow. Alex, I'm thinking of a Paxson 2200 for my second gen. How difficult was your blower install on the white car? Love both channels. Keep up the good content. Um, I did the very, very smart thing of dropping it off at Tradition Motorsports. And I said, charge me. <laughs> I'm not about that life. I, I got money to make. I got shit to do. I support local businesses. I think it took them, I think, seven hours. Beginning to end everything, you know? But I couldn't tell you because... I don't fucking know. <laughs> I haven't done it. I'm not going to do it. Like, as long as I can make good money, I'll pay people to do it for me. Fuck all that. These hands, the only calluses I got on these hands from the gym. 
There ain't no wrench, nothing on this thing. When I work on my car, I curse the shit out of that car. You motherfucker, piece of shit. Fuck you, start, startable, startable. I can't wait till I get my small block Ford in the Fairmont, and I'm gonna have to like do the thermostat housing on it, and I'm I'm gonna remotely mount the fucking thermostat on that thing. Fuck that. Some any Camaro making fun of five O's needing boost to beat them. Guys, twelve K deep in a ten second car. My point exactly. Any Camaro guys, any Mustang guys that can beat a boosted car, forget that. How much did he spend on his car? How much did you spend on your car? His mod, let's say you buy a, a, a used um, Gen 2 S550 with a blower, right? You spent 35 to 42 right? Depending if it's E85 compatible or not. And let's say that car is on E85, making 15 pounds of boost. You bought it for $42,000. Homeboy. Homeboy with an NA Gen 3 bought his for 35, put 10 into it. 10 into it. And brags that he beat your fucking boosted car. I don't think he'll beat a 15 PSI boosted car. Not even close. He'll maybe beat a 10 PSI pump gas car. Do you know what I'm saying? But yeah, they're like, oh, I can't believe you need boost to beat this bitch ass NA car. You go inside, it looks Swiss cheesed up. It looks like he took a ride on uh, MLK and was, you know, rival gang shot him up. I mean, your shit's fucking Swiss cheesed up. No, no, you got it. In my opinion, you know how you quash that bullshit? Minimum weight. <clears throat> I'm getting to the point where guys should run a minimum weight so that Swiss cheese isn't uh, celebrated. All right. What do you want to do? NA. Sick. What are the conditions? Pump E85 and 3,200 pounds. Mother oh, you're going to hear motherfuckers complain. What? Man, bullshit. <laughs> I don't know how to go fast unless I switch cheese it up. Bit? <laughs> Stupid. Dumbass. When can you go to the grocery store? Do you look back at your car lovingly? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Every time. The Fairmont, mostly. I cry when I get in that Fairmont. I'm gay. Hey, Alex, just curious. Will an aftermarket catback exhaust make any more power difference than the stock catback? Currently on E85 Lund 2, just prefer it being quiet. I don't think it'll make a big difference. You'll probably see five to eight horse. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Um, Coca-Cola says, be right back. Oh, okay. We'll stop the show, Coca-Cola. Yeah, them Camaros got big money in A&A cars. Yeah, they got like 427s in them bitches and big compression and big cams and Holly high rams and dildos and fucking tuning and holly. It just dumb shit. I'm like, dude. Dude, you can brag about having a fast A&A car, but the amount of money you have in that car is, is ridiculous. Speaking of Fairmont, check out Suicide King's Fox Body Badass Car. Why? Why would I want to check him out? Hey, made live today. What's up, Alex? Hey, can you start from the beginning? Because I'm late. Says Mustangs and motorcycles. Whole saw built cars. Cheese life. SD Irishman, minimal gains. Most okay, okay. Victor Ray says, Alex, I'm looking to purchase a Gen 2 very soon. Manual 17 performance package with a Pro Charger and a manual 17 with a Whipple. Which one would you read? The Whipple. The Whipple. The Whipple. The power delivery is great. It's not a Pro Charger. Um, the torque is fun on the street. Whipples are made well. You'll appreciate the Whipple car much more manual than a Pro Charger, 100%. Rape Tape says, 11 GT, 120,000 miles, run strong, want to boost it. Am I nuts? Oof, keep it under 10 PSI. Ooh, what's going on, buddy? Keep it under 10 PSI. Andres Martinez, any blower will make a 104 Innovations fuel system. <laughs> you want to play? <laughs> I'm telling you, if you've never had a Boston Terrier, they're some of the best dogs around. Go ahead, buddy. He just wants to play all the time. I don't know why these guys are still arguing any versus boost. It's like arguing Trump versus Biden. Well, it depends on I lost seven subscribers yesterday and I laughed my ass off. I'm like, they probably were all Biden voters. Man, fuck this guy, man. Shit. <laughs> Alex, can you tune my Prius, please? Why do centrifugal blowers snap blower belts often? It doesn't snap blower belts often. Um, BM717252. My belt. Shut up, dude. <laughs> Take the squeaker out. My belt is the same belt I had on the Vortex for 30,000 miles. 30,000 miles. It's the belt alignment. Belt alignment, belt alignment, belt alignment. 100%. If you're snapping belts on your blower, it is the belt alignment or a belt alignment or a tensioner issue. 100%. Oh, well, you can you can actually see him. He's all big and shit. There you go. 
the magic bullet. Thank you for the booty advice, Alex, says Victor Ray. I finally caught a live stream. I live out here in Germany. Um, appreciate it. Um, why do YouTube make you cut things out of TDC? Was it danger zone? Yeah. So when I'm on TDC and the live chat disappears, is because I had to trim the video due to a copyright restriction. So if they find something that was copyrighted, they demonetize the whole video. And I don't want my all my videos demonetized. I want to start making money on that. <laughs> I want to start making money on um, on YouTube. So I have to trim out the section that they say was a copyright restriction, and I'm monetized again. Ooh. English master for the win. Uh, yeah, I get it. You can have an option, but thinking Biden is better in officer than Trump is absolutely insane. Biden voters got to be LS guys. <laughs> no, I mean, maybe. LS guys don't vote. <laughs> they don't vote. Someone said free Tony. Um, let's go, Brandon. I found a store that says no lower than 70% and it tested 85%. Got a new spot. Racetrack has been out. Racetrack has been out forever. So 441, Sunoco and the Turnpike, they all have E85, but the racetracks that are super convenient um, are just literally gone. Like, like they're just out, and I don't know why. So, anyway. <laughs> uh, you get it. Yeah, I get it. You can have an opinion, but thinking... Okay, I already got that. already got that. Do Coyotes need a progressive for nitrous, or are they okay on a window switch for 100 shot? Oh, 4.6, Chris, they're okay on 100 shot. They don't need a progressive. See, I don't think Nitrous and Coyote, I don't think Nitrous, see, I think it's the the way the Nitrous gets dispersed, I think is the biggest issue. If you're looking to, in my opinion, and I've thought about this, but I don't have the kind of coin, but I've thought about it. I've thought of seeing how much I can get away with with the red car with a direct port Nitrous system, right? I don't want to have the intake distribute the nitrous and fuel. I want it to be direct right above the fucking cylinders. The problem with that is that hits really hard. So the tuning has to be super on point, which is fine. I, I, don't, I don't think that'll be a problem. But then, you know, nitrous is funny like that. You know, you can have a stuck solenoid. You can have many little things. And in my opinion, it's not the quote unquote safest power adder. It's the one that requires the most knowledge, in my opinion. I, I know it's the cheapest in terms of price, but it requires the most knowledge to run in a Coyote. And I thought, can I go nines with a 200 shot on the red car? Not just yes, but fuck yes. I guarantee I can go nines in the red car with a nitrous shot. 150 to 175, but direct port. Because it'll be quote unquote safer and no puddling will happen, no weird shit. But is it worth it to me? Probably not. It's probably not worth it to me because why? I already have an eight second car, two eight second cars, and the red car has been nines, tens, and then right now it's an 11 two car. So why? You know, just cause for content? Maybe. But am I willing to grenade a motor because nitrous is just funny like that? Am I willing to grenade a motor? Just to prove a point, I don't think I'm going to make $8,000 on video to justify fucking with nitrous that, at that amount. Who makes the best Turbo 400 swap kit for S197? I mean the swap kit. I know JPC has a swap kit, but my trans on the GT500 is a um, RPM transmissions uh, Turbo 400 or 400, whatever you want to call it, with a cone converter. Got to hit the gym. See y'all later. Catch the rest of the night at work. Jimmy Jam, stay in shape because that blonde chick is not going to want some flubby dude. She's hot. Good for you. Um, thanks, brother. There's a common misconception out there that coyotes can't take the nitrous hit for long. Want to throw a hundred and my mamalona and gap two valves. No problem. Dude, pfft, shit. 150 on the mamalona without progressive. And as long as you activate it above 4,000 RPMs, bit I'll be happy. I recommend a progressive programmer for nitrous. You can recommend it all you want, but you don't need it. But recommending it is nice. Coming in late, says Jason Atkins. I don't know if I missed it, but my RHW white S197 you showed yesterday was the damn dash removed rear deck definition of tin can. Oh, J Jason Atkins, that was your S197 with the dick intake right out the bitch? Why'd you do that? Explain to me why you did that. For fun, for Instagram, ridiculous, but funny. The Whipple SF50 I'm looking at has an N gauge in the vent. Will I have any issues attempting to get a new tune from Lund or any foreseeable technical issues? Victor Ray, as long as the N gauge has the ability, listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth. As long as it has the ability to be unlocked, then I don't see any issues tuning that car. Do you know what I am saying? But go to the tuning status 
screen. So turn on the engage, hit tuning, status, show us before you buy the fucking car or the engage on the screen what it says, and we can find out if it's able to be unlocked or not. At what power level do I need to run a hob switch on the 85 TVS Gen 1? I don't think you ever need to run a hob switch because I know that 4 Innovations recommends run one 465 pump and then the second one on a hobs. Honestly, I run two constant for fucking four years. I run two constant pumps for four years, guys. Not a problem. Blow up the red car, man. You got big Lund coin. I don't got big Lund coin. Coin treats me really well, and I appreciate them very much. Get over there. But I'm not going to just blow it on that car. Do you know what I'm saying? Blow, <laughs> typo, brother. I meant the, J, the white one you showed. Okay. I, I got it. It's your car. Why the hell did you do that? <laughs> hey, Alex, I know you're not a fan of Holly. I'm not a, I don't dislike Holly. Relax. I just wanted to ask why. I'm thinking of Terminator X in my Fox body, not a Coyote. Thanks. So this is, I don't have a problem with Holly or Holly products. I think they're fucking really good. My problem with Holly is this. It makes non-tuners tune well. Or it makes non-tuners get their heads really big. Guys, Holly is tuning that car. You're not. Holly is. Holly makes it really easy. Holly absolutely makes it self-learn, really easy adjustments. So you can see guys that literally wake up in a double wide, step outside their house, and have a seven-second LS swap notch. And they'll go, yeah, farm boy tuned or, you know, country built or, you know, redneck fucking flatline motorsports built. And I'm like, Holly tuned it. <laughs> so that's my issue with Holly is the fans. Like, I don't dislike the New York Yankees. Their fans are fucking stupid. Because what do they say every single time the Yankees get swept out of another playoff run or the Red Sox beat them in a play-in game? 27! 27! Talk to me when you get 27! Or 28, whatever, how many they got? Talk to me when you get 28! And I'm like, what? <laughs> the fans are stupid. Stay away from the on three kits, LOL. Alex, you plan on getting a Hellcat keeping his stock or nah? If I get a Hellcat, that bitch is going to be 900 horse E85. And pump gas, 800. That's, that's if I get a Hellcat. Problem is, the Hellcat. <laughs> the Hellcat is such a Section 8 car that it's going to get stole. You know what I'm saying? So apparently on Amazon, you can buy devices that can mimic the key fob on a Hellcat and you can steal that shit no problem. These bitches dirty, bitches dirty. I feel like Gleesh when I clutch my 30. Oh, <laughs> let, me, let me let me turn the volume down so I don't get copyrighted, copyrighted. Let me see. Oh, come on. We're, we're, let's get to the chorus. You ain't like that. You ain't catch a murder. <laughs> I'm telling you, this they they actually sell you it when you buy a Hellcat or a Trackhawk, they got Lil Dirk in the radio. Like they it's an SD card with Lil Dirk's album. They just sucking dick cause on lick, bitch. <laughs> I'm telling you. So, you know, that's the problem with the hell with the Hellcats and Trackhawks that it's gonna get stolen. He wouldn't got out for that body, took his mask off. <laughs> God damn it, my car. That comment didn't come out how I envisioned it. Holy shit, Jason Adkins. You you're as good as you're as good at spelling as you are at putting cold air intakes on Cobra Jet uh, Gen 1s. <laughs> Holy shit. Um running two 465 constantly? Wouldn't that produce crazy amount of heat? <gasps> oh, just it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna. <laughs> how is it gonna produce heat? Tell me how's it going to produce heat. So you got one pump submerged in fluid pumping out 465 liters worth of fuel returning at the regulator. How much heat does that cause? Have you measured it? <laughs> now turn on a second pump doing the same thing. And it's regulated at 55 PSI and returning at the regulator. It's a fire. Oh, you're going to cause a fire. Oh, what the fuck, bro? 
So by that, by that logic, a Magnafuel 750 should never run. Why would you put a Magnafuel 750? You're just going to spontaneously combust the fuel in the tank, bro. Why is that? Because you're pumping 750 liters a gallon, son. What? Fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> Shit. Uh, I like the way they look, but I've never had luck with Mopar. Get the Challenger, not four-door Charger. No, I'd get a Challenger. I wouldn't get a Charger. Alex, did you see the Nate Ryder selling his 1,000 horsepower GT500? Hey, guys. What's going on, guys? Before we... Uh... <laughs> Hey guys, Nate Ryder here. What's going on, guys? So what I'd like to do is sell the 1,000 horsepower GT500. But before that, I'm going to tell you about this video game called Suck My Ass. Right here, you can, or this app called Suck My Ass. If you want to get your ass sucked, just dial and ass suckers and your area code will pop up on your phone. Anyway, back to the video. I love those inter-video uh, promos. Ben Shapiro does it great. He goes, you know, Joe Biden's really going to take this economy. And talking about the economy, I really love Doritos. I'm like, <laughs> what? Like, call me out if I ever do that on this channel. By the way, guys, I'd like to promote uh, Schwinkterine. That's right. Listerine butt wipes to make your ass smell like mint. Schwinkterine. Tony's smarter than most of these Mustang owners. <laughs> hey, Alex, I got a... 19 pp1 mustang how much does it cost to properly build and make 900 real horsepower and daily driven for innovation fuel system let's do um 2500 bucks just labor at everything 2500 bucks for innovation fuel system beefcake special like a paxton beefcake special let's say 6500 bucks so you got 6500 you got um you got 6500 you got uh 2500 so that's uh if, you, if i do my math right a million dollars like 10,000 bucks, about 10,000 bucks, 10,000 bucks. And then tuning and all, you know, 10, 10,000, 900 horsepower. You're going to be the 10 to $12,000 to get that kind of number. 700, 750 liters a gallon. Uh, I'll, I like my charger wide body with drag pack. I run both pumps and have an alcohol and temp in line in the gauge. Can confirm there are no issues with heat. No issues with heat. Zero issues with heat. Alex, you crack me up, sir. I'm backlogged on some of your shows and both channels. Appreciate the info and sarcasm. <laughs> Thank you. Alex, in terms of modding and easy numbers, what's better? The 5.2 Predator or the 5.8 Trinity? The Predator. <laughs> uh, I don't have to finish. I don't have to finish the rest of it. The Predator. Predator. It's stock Predator, the motor, and boost, you can make 11, 1200. The uh, Trinity, you got to build it to make that. You got to build it to make that. Mm. Boy, he pulls hard. Damn. You're, you're like a little pit bull. Mm. Got to play with the man. Um, those wide body red eyes are just evil looking. They're badass. Red eyes are fucking badass. I know DJ. DJ. Uh, <laughs> I like seeing DJ all the time. Uh, DJ is one of those guys that I watch on Valley Racing and Desert 1320. And even if the negotiations are exactly his way, he got something to say. So let's say DJ goes up for a for a negotiation. I, I right, man, and he comes up there like beefing already. And I think he, you know he he's smart. He plays the game. He's like, all right, man. So this house gonna go down. I want the left lane. Guy goes bet. All right, man. I want two burnouts. Guy goes bet. He goes all right, man. I'm gonna flip. All right, bet. Heads, heads. I uh I got the flagger. Bet. All good. All good. Yeah. Fuck you looking at. Fuck you looking at. <laughs> I'm like, DJ, you want everything. <laughs> yeah, fuck him. Fuck him. I'm like, dude, you need, to, you need to relax, bro. You want everything. Now, fuck that guy, bro. I got money. I got money. I got money. Shit. <laughs> My house on the lake. <laughs> My faucets are mowing. My faucets are mowing. What are your faucets? Shit. I'm like, dude, fucking relax. You need to just fucking relax. I'd be the worst for camera. Hey, man, what's up? What's up? Alex, what lane would you like? I'd like the left lane. Guy goes, nah, I want the left lane. All right, cool. Let's flip for it. Okay, cool. You won. Hey, uh, do you want to bump in first? Whatever you'd like, buddy. Have a good day. Uh, oh, you got to cause drama, Alex. DJ goes in. What the fuck you looking at? <laughs> Yo, you looking. <laughs> Don't you love how these guys square up to fight and they're like. <laughs> I'm like. 
You never fought. <laughs> Looking like, you know, Mike Tyson's punch out. You check your plugs after every pass at Second Shift Racing. Second Shift Racing's here. How much harder in terms of engine health is nitrous than boost? Dude, <laughs> I've seen nitrous cars <laughs> make because it's dependent on the uh, end user. So it all depends on the end user. I can't just say blatantly like, or just, oh, geez. I can't just blanket statement say, oh, nitrous is harder. Nitrous is fine if you know what you're doing. But blowers, you can melt the fucking pistons too if you don't know what you're doing. But with nitrous, you got to know a lot more than just with, than with boost because you really, that's up to you. Bottle temperature, you forget to open the bottle. You forget to, you know, you put the wrong pill in the bitch. You pilled it for E85 still when it's on pump gas. Uh, yeah, it can be a whole bunch of problems. So I don't think it's any worse for the car. It's just the end user has to be more knowledgeable with nitrous than on um, superchargers. <clears throat> Mike T Trapani gave me 10 bucks. Thank you, sir. I traded in my Challenger Red Eye and got more than I paid for after six months. He's my favorite negotiator. Second shift, Matt 2011, DJ going live at eight. He's going live at eight? Sick, badass. Uh, I want to get back in the Gen 1, 13, 14 Mustang, but the market is... Stupid high right now, 100,000 miles for 23,000. Tan locos. Look, I'm going to go to a dealership and I'm going to see what they give me for the Mamalona. And if they give me stupid money, she gone. Again, the whole thing with Jake, I don't know if he's actually going to promote the turbo cap. I'm going to have a good heart to heart with him tomorrow. Say, hey, Jake, what's going on? You going to market this kit? No. If he says no, I don't care. But don't you want a turbo? I'm like, ah, I'd rather money and get rid of a payment than a turbo truck. You know what I mean? So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. DJ funny as hell. He's great. Heads I win, tails you lose. <laughs> 50 for an autograph pedal extender. <laughs> you mean a piece of, you mean a, 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 a three by three or four by, or two by four by three piece of uh, wood? Is that what you want? <laughs> I'll send it to you for 50 bucks. Fuck yeah. This gorilla, um, laughing my ass off. That's gorilla fight stance knuckle draggers. <laughs> I can't help but laugh when people throw hands like that. Right. They're like... <laughs> Come on, come on. And then they, they have a real wide stance. Then they hike up their pants. <laughs> put, put, put a fucking belt on. You know, they're like... <laughs> like oh, man. But you know, sometimes they catch a good one and they fucking knock motherfuckers out. And I'm like, all right, good. Stop it and drop a like. Uh, I'll catch replay later. I got snuck in my last fight. Ended up with stitches. I hate that. See, that's why I don't. I don't like getting into physical altercations because you can't control the other motherfuckers. You could be handing this guy his ass, and some dude comes up behind you and knocks you out, and then you're getting your teeth kicked in because you're out, and you wake up in the hospital without fucking teeth. And I'm like, nah, I'm good. I'll catch you later. I'll catch you later. I'll catch you later, and I'll catch you later. I'll catch you all separately. That's Mexican Racing League going live at 8. Oh, okay. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so guys, worry about fuel heat, but open their cold air intake for more power. High intelligence, equal high power. But Alex, running two pumps constantly isn't going to create a massive amount of heat? No. Absolutely not. What I'd love to do is put a temp sensor in my fuel rail. Oh, I should do that. Fuck it. Put a temp sensor in my rail. Data log with the engage. Go mm, turn the one pump on because I can I can I can go to the FC3 control at the back seat, undo one pump, run one pump, run it for five minutes, just car idling, and then boom, turn the second one on and see the delta, the difference in heat, one versus two, and I bet you it's like three degrees or five, if that. Trade it for a 450 platinum. You may, you want me to listen to your words again? You want me to trade in a. Gen 3 F-150 base model truck with rubber fucking floor mats for a F-450 <laughs> Platinum, I'd have to give thirty five to fucking $50,000 down to make it reasonable. No. Daily reminder, FKA, you're not wrong. <laughs> um, where can I go get my clutch assist spring ported? <laughs> That's good. That's so good. Was asking if I had the right person. Didn't mean the word as a statement, says Chase M. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Understood. Um, Driven Lifestyle says, Alex, I found out today that dealer banks are making it impossible for lease cars to be purchased and being leased. Like Carvana can't buy a lease car from GM Financial or Honda Financial. Crazy. The used car market is that strong that I'm willing to fucking put a muffler back on the mamalona, put the stock hole there in that bitch. Take the two now and go, how much would you give me for this? And they're like, 
$48,000. I'm like, get it out of my life. Not a problem. Get it out of my, not, not 48. Look, I'll take anything over 35. I'll take anything over 35. <clears throat> Alex, why do you dislike pro chargers? I don't dislike. I mean, I dislike one person at pro charger heavily, but they make power. There is no doubt that they make power. I don't love the stage two or whatever kits that put an auxiliary pulley to drive the supercharger by effectively extending the crank four inches or three inches or whatever it is. So now you have your AC drive, your accessory drive, and then they make you bolt on a supercharger drive on the cranks now. And what do you think happens on the cranks now when it starts to see high boost? When you pulley down and you see high boost. Uh-oh, little man did a walk. Let's see what he did out there. He did a little walk. What'd you do? No, no, he's good. All right. I saw him do a little walk, but he's good. So, yeah, I would, I would, I would not recommend the Pro Charger simply for the fact that their drive requires you to bolt on another pulley extending the crank so imagine what happens it's no different than leverage right when you have a a wrench man maybe you guys know this but maybe you don't so let's say you have a wrench right a half inch drive wrench like a regular craftsman or snap-on wrench and it's eight inches long and you're trying to get a bolt out and you don't well you get a breaker bar that's longer and you make that bolt come loose a lot easier same theory same exact theory when it comes to the crank breaking the crank breaking is more likely if it's extended out more. Now, they do sell a crank support. Basically, they copied MFP's piece because he went there and said, hey, I would like to provide these to you guys for your supercharger kits. Pro Charger said, we don't need it. Bam. Two years later, they have one that looks exactly like his. Trifling shit, but whatever. That's why I don't like them. But they make power. Now. A crank mounted, meaning crank driven gear drive right off the crank, bitch. Hell yeah. All day, every day. God, I love this in the dating channel. Laughs so good. Same time I learn a lot. Channel's doing amazing. Thank you, Driven Lifestyle. If someone was to donate, let's say 10 grand, any idea how you'd improve the channel? Yo, my God, yeah. Um, 10 grand. So if someone was to give me 10 grand, I would upgrade all the computer equipment and cameras. That is going to probably be five grand right off the rip. Um, I would probably get a lot more camera equipment, get more stuff in the background, maybe get a better setup, better rig. Um, but it would be mostly hardware related, computer, badass, stupid, dumb fast, cameras. I mean, I would like justify the cost too. I'd be like, here's all the receipts because it's not like I'm just going to put it in my pocket and fuck around. I don't do any of that. Guys, the money I get from these channels goes right back in. And maybe you guys don't see a big thing, but <laughs> to maintain this stuff, it costs a lot of money, but I would love to upgrade the camera so I can have a way nicer camera. So you can see me live really sharp and clearly. Then in turn, when I do standalone videos, I have that camera to film with. And you know how cameras can be $1,500 to $2,000. Computers can be $2,000 to $3,000. So right there, there's five. So that's how, I mean, I would, there's a lot of things I can do to improve the channel 100%. But mostly it would be hardware, sit down. I'd, make, I'd get a table. I'd get a table like a Joe Rogan style setup where you could sit down and have a guest in front of you and do background stuff. And I'd actually have guests on because that's a big investment. A table, a nice table set up with the right equipment so that in the headphones, I can hear this person and they can hear me and make it look good, I mean, that that's that requires a little bit of an investment, for sure. All right, I'm getting close to getting the fuck out of here. Got a couple minutes. Just go packs in a Vortec, unless you want to do one of them crazy badass crank pro charger setups. When testing pumps on my flow bench, two 465s, two Hellcat pumps will leave, will heat the gallon, five gallons of fuel in the reservoir, 80 degrees within two minutes, 20 minutes of test time. Will raise? Will we heat? No, it'll heat up the fuel in the reservoir, 80. That's it? 80 degrees? That's it. All day, every day. Good explanation of the Pro Charger. Thanks. You got an 11 a second eclipse. I've decided to go VMP Odin. Hey, did you guys see Can I Be Frank's channel where an Odin 10R80 car gapped a plaid? Go check out Can I Be Frank's channel on YouTube where a white Odin supercharged Gen 3 gapped 
a plaid. Are there any negatives to Whipple blowers, Alex? Not that I know of in terms of negatives. I don't love the power delivery, meaning it's softer down low than the TVS, but it has way more up top than the TVS. It just keeps making power, whereas the TVS tends to drop off at about maybe 7,000 RPM. So I don't think there's a problem. If you know how you cure that problem, more fucking boost and the car's happy. Um, for sure, good internet, exactly. Um, do you think you could make a podcast equipment video for some of us wanting to start? You, do you think you can make a podcast equipment video for some of us wanting to start? I could show you what I have. I could show you what I have. I could show you a video. But guys, there's already that on the internet. How do you think I learned? How do you think I learned? You literally type in on YouTube, best podcast equipment or for starting starting podcasts or, or equipment for podcast beginners. And this guy shows you the mic, the filter, the headset, the camera, the right ring light, and the software. That's how I learned. Um, like stupid little things like lights and background, like all that stuff matters because you guys have shit to look at. I want, I want the the disco light hasn't been up forever because I literally have to buy another extension cord to like make that run because all the extension cords are now I have three screens in front of me. And uh, I'll take a picture of my setup and you're going to go, oh my God, that's, that's his workstation. I'm like, yeah. So it's all, <laughs> there's a lot of power being drawn right here. Is it possible to port my couch so it doesn't touch the wall? <laughs> that couch touches the door too. Can I put my exhaust tips for better flow? All right, guys, I'm out of here. It's getting silly. 279 likes, 284 views. Thank you very much. We had about 310 at one time. So things are going good. So I'll be on tomorrow, eight o'clock. Talking shit, the original OG for an hour and a half. YDBT dailies are one hour long, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, two, no, sorry, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, five o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Tuesday, we do Talking Shit, the OG show at eight o'clock for an hour and a half, and we'll talk some shit, all right, guys, I'm going to get the hell out of here, walk the dog, and you know what happens when I walk the dog, for those of you that like the other channel, you know what happens when I walk the dog, and George Sanchez says, keep up the great content, all right, guys, have a great rest of your day, I'll see you guys tomorrow, eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time, stay tuned for Mexico Racing League, 8 p.m., I think their time, which is nine Eastern, just go on their channel, see when they're going to go live, and support their shit, and try to get them to swear, because those guys are holding back every second trying to swear, everyone wants to see you explain, that's the reason, says JD Swag, I'll see what I can do for you guys, all right, guys, have a great rest of your day, see you later. <clears throat>